Hello and welcome to another episode of This Week in Goldmaking, presented by Darkshore Capital. We're back after a brief hiatus, and we're jumping right into it. We've got two very exciting things happening on the market update this week. First of all, WoW token prices have been slashed to pieces. We're down to, I guess it's just over 100,000 gold in the U.S. region average, which is just the U.S. region for tokens, which is fantastic. The WoW community at large my understanding at least, was that we never expected token prices to ever drop nearly this much ever again. And what we can learn from this is that we can expect this kind of behavior in the future. It, I, I would have never guessed in a million years that we would have had this big of a drop, but here we are, historical moment, it can't happen. So there you go. Other big news, of course, is the addition of the BFA materials to the market tracking. And as you can see, you don't have too much data on it yet. Uh, the Undermine Journal is still working on getting uh, the region values for over time. So this is gonna be kind of a work in progress. We've got the current values there. I'm fairly confident in wanting to track the Anchor Weed and the Umbra Shards. However, the other three, the Platinum War, Calcified Bones, and Deep Sea Satin, I'm not exactly set on those. So if anyone has any opinions on if those should be included, something else should be included, I'd love to hear them. I'm not super familiar with the three crafting professions, gear crafting professions, I should say, in regards to BFA yet, so I would love to hear anyone's input. Still have the Legion materials on there, as well as the other items we've been tracking. Going to be spending some time over the next couple of weeks to evaluate which ones are going to stay, which ones are going to leave, and kind of see where that goes. And as you can see, uh, looking at the gold ore number on the US realm, that was turning out to be a bit more of a meme that I'd kind of hoped for. Uh, so if something like that is not actually adding any economic value, then we're just not going to bother tracking it. Quick disclaimer, if you are going to give any comments or suggestions, keep in mind that this is intended to be a broad overview at a very macroeconomic level. So please frame any suggestions or comments with that in mind. Moving on to the news. BFA has obviously launched and there's been a frenzy of gold making opportunities, as I'm sure all of you are aware. And, you know, one thing that kind of comes to mind as something that people tend to ask during this time, what's the best way to make gold in Battle for Azeroth? The beginning of an expansion, what's the best way to make gold? And my answer to that is actually the same answer that I give to anyone asking about what's the best way to make gold during any time period, and that's to do what you know best. There's so many ways to make gold and so many different possibilities that it it just isn't possible to just have one best one. And there's so many different viable ways. So taking advantage of your own experience and knowledge in a particular market or a particular crafting sector is going to just give you the, the highest return on investment because you know how things behave. You know how to respond to things that have happened in the past. It's, it's all there. Now, that said, maybe there's only one or two particular things that you're super well versed in, then, okay, at that point, it's it's good to start thinking about expanding out to different horizons. And you might ask, well, how, how are you supposed to do that if um, you're only supposed to stick with what you know? Well, I would say there's a difference between asking the question, what's the best way to make gold? And asking the question, what are good ways to make gold? It's kind of a subtle difference, but the first one kind of is just looking for the get which get rich quick scheme, which everyone's always looking for, of course. And the second one is more of uh, taking an approach to learning a, a complex endeavor, which gold making definitely is. So I would suggest to look around, watch YouTube videos, watch streams, read Twitter, uh, use your resources. Uh, one super, in my opinion, underappreciated resource in the gold making aspect of things is actually just Wowhead. I mean, having a database of all the items that are available is incredibly powerful. One of my favorite things to do is just go on Wowhead and start researching a profession I'm not familiar with. You know, take take Corium for example. Say like I was watching some YouTube videos and I saw that Student Albatross was doing these crazy Corium mining raids. Like, okay, well, what's that all about? Why why are people making raids to mine Corium? There must be something to this. Okay, so Corium ore, Corium bars. Oh, hey, Corium bars are used to make uh, the fail steel long blade and i've heard of that that's a pretty big deal the, the recipe is super expensive then you start just digging down the rabbit hole of like all these other uses for corium and then other things in burning crusade you just, you just get all kinds of inspiration really cool stuff to do this stuff obviously gets me very excited so if you haven't tried doing that i, I would give it a try see if it uh see it appeals to your fancy because 
it's a great resource. All right, wrapping that back in again, the best way to make gold at the beginning of expansion is to do what you know how to do. Next item of news. It's one more week at the recording of this video until the first raid of the expansion, which is Uldir, comes out. Let me just say this. Consumables are going to be in high demand. More on that in a moment. Third item. Developer Q&A happened last week, at which they noted that they're going to be changing listing fees for crafted goods, and they're going to be nerfing walls which, if you're not familiar with, is when somebody posts a, an inordinate, largely, <laughs> a very large amount of stack size one items on the auction house, causing all kinds of issues. This is a good thing. Lastly, and this isn't really so much of a news item, it's something I've kind of observed recently, is a lot of farms that are getting discovered for BFA specifically are being nerfed almost as soon as they're found. Things like uh, people were farming for the mounts, uh, like just farming for cloth or BOEs, things of that nature. I'm not super sure on the specifics, but my observation is simply that they're they're just getting nerfed so so quickly. And I don't know if that's really a comment so much on, you know, Blizzard's too lazy, quote unquote, to test all these different possibilities of farming as it is. Uh, the gold making community is just so gosh darn creative and like. There, there's so much passion for finding these awesome optimized farms that you, you find these outliers and Blizzard's like, oh my goodness, no one on our QA team in a million years ever would have figured this out, so we got to fix it. Uh, and I, I think that's honestly a pretty cool thing because you know you look at WoW 13 years ago and man, the gold making strategies back then compared to there to now are just are just nothing. So just thought I'd bring that to everyone's attention. Moving on, first topic for today. As I said, we're gonna buy flasks now. Now, before I get into this, I, want, I need to uh, put up a disclaimer, and I tell this to a lot of people. If anybody ever comes to you claiming to know the future, you need to immediately be extremely skeptical because nobody can tell the future. And if you need a, an anecdotal example of this, uh, I have a previous video where I, I told a nice story about thwarting some time-traveling stock traders, and that, that gives you all the evidence you should ever need to know. But I digress. Future, people can't tell the future. However, that said, this particular thing that I'm going to go over here, I have a lot of reasons to believe will repeat itself. So we're going to take a look at some historical examples, and I'm going to present you an argument as to why I believe it's going to repeat itself, and you are free to make your own decisions. So we are looking here at Flask of the Whispered Pact, which is, of course, the intellect flask from Legion. And we're looking specifically at about the first month of Legion. So this is September 1st. Uh, excuse me, Legion came out September 30th, or sorry, August 30th. So this is effectively when it came out. So for the first week or so, the region price, as you can see, is over 2000 And after the first week is when the price started to come down. This graph isn't great because uh, it's scaled up so high. These prices did not, obviously not hold for very long. But as you can see, you know, already 1600 as opposed to 2000 or sorry, 200 and 400, 2400. And the quantity is already beginning to rise. So here's, here's the first week, very high prices, extremely low quantity. As the second week approaches, we're starting to get higher quantity. Now we're up to 132 on the quantity, region price 1400 drops down to even you know 1,300, 1,200, quantities increasing. And by the time the first raid is released, which I believe is actually somewhere around September 27th, uh, so the week leading up to it is when the price starts to go back up. Now the quantity starts to go up as well, but by the time we get to the actual raid release date on September 27th, we're back up to 2,000. So if you had bought a bunch of flasks, for example, around this time period when it was only you know 1,300, you could be making a fairly decent profit. Uh, and I know this from experience, because this is exactly what I did at the beginning of Legion. So the hypothesis is, first week, high prices, low quantity. Second week, high quantity, higher quantity, lower prices. Third week, the prices start to come up again. And by the fourth week, they're back up to their first week prices with very little supply, or at least much greater demand because of the fact that raids are actually happening and people need flasks for raids. So we'll quickly go over to the Flask of the Endless Fathoms, which is, of course, the Battle for Azeroth Intellect Flask. And let's uh, just have a little look here. So the, the pricing is a little less uh, complete on the Undermine Journal for these newer items. However, we can still glean some useful information. Okay, so 
August 14th is when Battle for Azeroth was released. A week after, on August 21st, is kind of, this is kind of our first week range. So, you know, this is uh, only on Proudmoor, but we can already see, right, 4,000, 5,000. The prices are enormous, and the quantity is staying somewhat low, at least at the beginning here. So it's starting to spike up here. But as you can see, the prices leveled off a little bit. My hypothesis is that it's going to go back up to these levels, these 4,000, these 7,000, maybe not 7,000. I don't know. We'll see. These 4,000 plus levels by the time the raid hits in another week. So you're free to make up your own mind on this. Uh, again, like I said, I don't think the region price historical information is on here, so we can't really compare it directly there. But for me, this is a good enough reason to be investing in these flasks. So that's what I'm doing. You're more than welcome to make up your mind. Own mind. Second item for today I wanted to bring up is I'm calling it pay attention to rich people. And let me explain what I mean by this. Somebody much smarter than me once said, and I'm going to paraphrase the quote here a little bit. Uh, if a billionaire, this is in the real world, by the way, a billionaire is offering some kind of public information, be it an interview, writing a book, uh, publishing an article, anything that's easily accessible, you should probably pay attention to that if you want to be a successful investor because you don't get to being a billionaire in this world without knowing what you're doing, at least somewhat. Like There's going to be some amount of information you're going to be able to give to people that's going to be useful. So with that in mind, this absolutely applies to WoW gold making as well. And the reason I was going to bring this up was because uh, one of these quote-unquote WoW billionaires, as I'm going to be calling them, posted a YouTube video recently. Uh, Mr. Hickon's actually first on this list here on the tweet. And I was going to actually add that as a news item because I think that's actually newsworthy. Somebody who is so rich in the game and is imparting knowledge on the community should be paid attention to. Now, uh, early this morning as I was browsing Twitter, the Gold Queen made this tweet, which I have featured here. Uh, some of my gold-making heroes are people you have never heard of. Gold, Secrets, Warcraft... And pretty much everyone on this list is what I would term as a WoW billionaire. They just make excessively large amounts of money, and you should actively seek them out and anything they are sharing publicly because they know what they're doing. So there you go. There you have it. There's the list. I highly endorse this list 100%. I think all but Sin Shroud I was already following. And yeah, like I said. All excellent, excellent gold makers. You should pay attention to them. Moving to QA, just had a couple this week. Actually, I did notice quite a few questions as I was perusing the various my various sources for questions, and it turned out most of the ones that I found I was actually answering already in this presentation. So these are the two that I hadn't. Number one, at what amount of gold will you stop personally, personally stop? And for me, it's not really a relevant question because I'm not really shooting for a number. I, I am very interested in the actual act of like making as much gold as possible. So for me, it's more of how high can I get my cash flows as opposed to how high can I get my liquid gold or my net assets. So a little subtle difference there, but I think it does it is uh, very telling of kind of my own personal goals. Secondly, this one's from Twitter. What do you think about the BOE weapons market for the next month? Uh, my response was very bullish. You know, we've got the raids coming out. It's going to be a lot of demand for just BOEs in general, and weapons specifically are a fairly integral part to a lot of classes' uh, ability to do good damage or healing or tanking. So if you have the availability to buy some cheap BOE weapons now, I would highly recommend it. Uh, flipping BOEs is a big part of my gold-making strategy long-term for Battle for Azeroth, and so I'm very bullish on BOEs in general. So I'm absolutely bullish on BOEs for the coming month. That's going to about wrap it up for this week. It's good to be back. Again, I do apologize for missing a couple weeks in there. Uh, if you're curious about any of that or why it happened, feel free to reach out to me. If you do have any questions you'd like to have answered or topics you'd like to discuss, feel free to reach out to me. My email is darkshorecapital at gmail.com. You can find me on Twitter at darkshorecap. Or if you'd like a more direct line of communication, at least in reference to this video, you can always leave a comment down below. I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you next week. Remember, 
Not for the Alliance, not for the Horde. It's all about for the gold. <laughs>